time to living life. Now, last week we had a chat with Melissa, the Prosecco Queen, and she explained to us the difference between Prosecco and other sparkling wines and told us how it was made. We also found out that you could be in a Prosecco masterclass drinking a lovely Prosecco with your friends all around Australia or the world via Zoom and she even runs masterclasses where you can be speaking live with the Italian winemaker in Italy. Hi Melissa and welcome to Over 50 So What. <laughs> Hi, how are you today? I love that idea of uh, meeting the winemaker too, sitting over there in yeah. the vineyard in Italy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was really lovely. And, uh, you know, the Italians are one of the most connected nations I can think of. They certainly have their internet sorted out no matter where you are. You're in the middle of nowhere in a vineyard, high up on a hill, and he's like, yeah, I can hear you perfectly, no problem. Now tell us about your vintage caravan bar, the Van de Vino. Van de Vino. Um, so she's a little bonded wood caravan, um, and we bought her about four years ago. We actually had it custom made. Um, and it's just a very cute little bar that we um, travel around to. We do weddings, we do birthdays, um, we do corporate events, we do festivals, um, and, yeah, we just turn up full of wine and start serving it up. Now, you also founded the Prosecco Festival about three or four years ago now. I did. I, did. I was just sitting there one day and I went, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself. And um, because I know so many of the Prosecco producers, because I've been, you know, drinking all their wine for so long, it was very easy for me to just call them up and say, hey, I've got this crazy idea. Um, if I create a Prosecco festival, will you come? And they're like, well, that sounds great. So I just rang, you know, 20 different people and asked them to come and they all said yes. So that was amazing. And we ended up, I think we had over 50 different Proseccos in, in the festival. That's the most amazing way for me, I think, to show the, to be able to educate people about Prosecco because a lot of the time you just go, oh, I'll have a glass of Prosecco and it's like, can I have a can of Coke? You don't really, it's just a thing. You don't realise there's so many different styles and that each wine maker will make it slightly differently. And so to be able to go and have 50 different wines in front of you to then have them side by side, you know, have a sip of each one, you can really start kind of realising how many different flavours there are that you might not have realised and that there is so much more to it than just, you know, cheap fizz because it's not, it's not what I would call cheap. I would call it affordable. Um, and so there are differing prices. You can pay $15 for some and you can pay $30 for others. It'll be where the grapes are from or, you know, all sorts of things that will determine what, what the price is. If it's a more boutique, you know, winery that doesn't have a lot of Prosecco grapes, then there's will be like a more exclusive smaller batch of it so you it, it ends up being more expensive but it's all made by hand so um to be able to do the festival it really was to, to educate people about um it's not just cheap fizz it's not too sweet there's so many different styles that you can try that will really um give you an insight into how many different ways that it, it can be made and what can be done to it so, and then, of course, we had all the food to go with it. So I was like, hmm, what goes with Prosecco? Everything. Um, but, well, it does. But um, that was, so we had, like, pizza and we had um, caviar and oysters. So, you know, seafood, that kind of stuff. And then we had Prosecco-flavoured cannoli and Aperol Spritz gelato and cheese. And uh, we even had a salami that was made with Prosecco in it. So with the current situation, are you you're going to do some pop-up Prosecco festival? Is that what's going to happen? Um, we're looking at doing um, a smaller pop-up version, maybe the end of March, um, but then I will just do some smaller events and I'm even thinking about just doing like a something down in Geelong um, at, a, at a like a function centre or something down there where they've got a big capacity and we could have maybe, you know, a couple of hundred people come through and do something and then do something like that down Bayside as well so that it's sort of spreading it out to different, areas sounds great so to finish off with you've already mentioned the, the things to eat with prosecco you've basically said everything goes with prosecco <laughs> it kind of does except chocolate for some reason well it's not some reason it's very acidic uh prosecco and and 
chocolate just needs something a bit different. But anything else, go for it. <laughs> so what about the temperature and the type of glass? Are, you, are there any recommendations there? Prosecco is best served ice cold. Um, Chardonnay is one of those wines where it can do with a little bit of uh, coming a bit more to room temperature because it allows the flavours to develop in a really positive way. But Prosecco doesn't benefit from that. The If you if it gets warm, it, it doesn't taste great. It needs to be icy cold. Um, and, I, you know, a champagne flute is great. If you've, My favourite shaped glass is a tulip shape. So instead of going straight up and down, it sort of has a bowl like that but then goes back up into the into the narrow top and that's just to let the air get in to the wine and sort of um, allow the oxygen to get on the surface of the wine which means that you'll be able to smell more of the flavours so the smaller the opening on the glass um, the less air you can get across the surface of the wine and then it's harder to sort of smell it and as we know half of our taste is actually smell so that whole experience of like you know smelling what's in the glass um, I think adds to the experience of when you actually end up tasting the wine. So um, definitely something that allows a little bit more air in the glass or just don't fill it all the way to the top. Now, you, you also do spritzes with it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So the Aperol spritz is the big one um, that everybody knows um, and that's made with soda water and ice and Prosecco and then um, some Aperol, which is a liqueur. I know some people get frightened off because they think it's going to be very strong in alcohol, but a liqueur and a spirit are two different things. An Aperol is only 11% alcohol as opposed to, say, a gin, which is about 40. So it's not strong like a gin. It's the same level of alcohol as the Prosecco itself. So it's it's for me it's like a cocktail that I can have, you know, two or three of instead of a normal cocktail where I shall only have one of. Um, and it, because it's full of soda water as well, it, it ends up being quite a refreshing drink, um, uh, especially on a hot day. And you normally have like a, a squeeze of um, orange in there as well or blood orange. Um, and it's it's kind of like a bitter orange flavour. But then when you mix it with the Prosecco, it kind of just tastes delicious. Oh, you make me want to go and get something out of the fridge right now. <laughs> I know, I'm sitting here going, gosh, I wish I had a glass of something right now. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on the show, Mel. Um, I knew it would be fun and I'd learnt even more again than I have. Awesome. So we look forward to seeing you again next time, but next time we'll make sure we have a glass with us. That would be way better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for watching Over 50, So What? And you thought that chocolate went with everything. Well, maybe not everything. If you have any topics you'd like to see on the show, just drop us a note through Facebook or through the website, carolohalloran.com. Now, recently you might have seen the oldest man in Australia, Dexter Kruger, turned 111, 111. And he started writing books at the age of 86 and he's still writing books at the age of 111. If you know any inspiring people who you think would inspire others and you'd like to see them on the show, please drop us a note through Facebook or through the website. And if you want more information about Andrew Jobling and the Prosecco Queen, then please go to our website, carolohalloran.com. Now, all show replays are also on the website, on Facebook, and on YouTube. You'll also find more fitness videos on YouTube, over 50, so what? I'm Carol. Keep active, have fun, and stay connected. And we'll see you next week. watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>